Welcome back, everybody. In this video, we're going to see what happens when we use a revisor after another revisor. Not inside, but after. So we're going to have a calculate, then we're going to have a, a divide symbol, but really, you know, plus, minus, whatever. And then we'll have another calculate. This is a pretty, uh, well, extremely common scenario. It's just something we haven't looked at yet, which is why it's worth looking at. It will also highlight why it's important that uh, revisors, and in, in particular the calculate function, cleans up after itself. It's a good roommate and sets the filters back to the way it found it. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xlsx, and I'm in the 2x2 two two tab because I have run out of good names for tabs, so I just call this one 2x2. Two two. I don't even really know what it means. But it describes this scenario right here, wherein uh, we have this calculate up here, which is going to uh, revise the filters with this override filter, and then run this sub-expression to generate a number. And then down here, um, it will revise the filters with this uh, override filter, and then run this sub-expression. Uh, this will produce a number, this will produce a number, we'll take that number, we'll divide it by that number, and, and we'll get an answer, okay? And importantly, uh, when this one's done running this calculate, the fact that it sets the filters back to the way that it found it is going to be very important to make this thing calculate, uh, if you'll excuse the pun, the tax pun, to generate the correct number that we want. Okay, you may have also noticed uh, that I, I, I'm kind of rewriting everything in a way that's different, different stylistically from how I've written it before, right? Um, this normally would be four lines, this normally would be four lines, so with this, so with this. It would look an awful lot like this, um, which is really uh, easy to read. The downside is, as you can see, it doesn't fit on the screen. So I've taken all this stuff and like these there, I've written that as one line, and that there, I've written that as one line. I think you could probably uh, read it at this point. I think you've got enough experience that's not really going to be a, a big deal. So uh, let's go ahead and just uh, start working through this thing. So what's going to happen here? Well. The first thing that's going to happen is uh, Dax is going to see this calculate and say, okay, we're going to freeze the sub-expression, uh, revise the filters, and then unfreeze and run the sub-expression. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's calculate. Anytime we see a revisor, the first thing we do is we go find the sub-expression and freeze it. There it is right there. This is the bit that will run after the filters have been revised. It's everything before that first comma, the first argument of calculate. So I'm going to select those cells, right-click, and I'm going to freeze it by painting it this blue color. Brr, very cold. Okay. So now Calculate is going to uh, revise the filters based on this override filter down there, argument two of Calculate. And then when it's done, it can you know unfreeze and run that. So uh, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to go uh, perform this derivation, go get all the values of the shift column, ignoring the filters. There are no filters right now, so it's actually not that important that it ignores the filters. But uh, regardless, whenever we use the all function, we're ignoring the filters. So this will produce a, a, a temp table that looks uh, very much like this. So go get all the values of shift, ignoring the filters. Well, uh, there's lunch and dinner. So I'm going to come over here. You probably could have guessed this. Shift, lunch, and dinner, right? What are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to pass it into the filter iterator, which is going to add an expression column with that definition for every row check to see if that row's shift is equal to lunch. And it's just going to keep the true rows because that's what the filter iterator does. It just keeps the true rows. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type in exp. And when I hit enter, we'll see that I've already populated this, right? So check, each, check to see if each row's uh, shift equals lunch. That's the definition of the expression column. So we get a true right there because lunch equals lunch, and a false right there because dinner does not equal lunch. Uh, the filter iterator will then look at this expression column and just keep the true rows, so we just keep, keep shift equals lunch. So I come over here, I type in shift, and I'm going to type in lunch. There we go. Okay, so now uh, that's what uh, line 5 produces. It produces that temp table right there, and it passes it to calculate, and calculate says, ah, I know what to do with temp tables. It will then take this temp table, and add it as an override filter. So now I can get my mouse to work. There we go. Nope. There we go. All right. So I've got my little cardinal arrows. I'm going to left arrows. I'm going to left click and drag up here. Uh, it's more accurate to say that calculate moves it into the filter context, but I like seeing it in both places. So I'm going to hold down control and get a little plus symbol on my cursor and let go and make a copy. Boom. There we go. So now calculate has taken that temp table and added it to the filter context, right? If there was a third, fourth, and fifth argument to calculate, those would be additional override filters, but there's just the one. So this is actually the only um, change to the filters that Calculate's going to make. So Calculate is now done revising the filters. Let's filter down to lunch. We will filter down to lunch. And there we go. Okay, so now uh, Calculate can unfreeze and run this sub-expression after having revised the filters. So we're going to select this right there. I'm going to right-click. And I'm going to pick this uh, dark gray color. We threw it in the microwave for 30 seconds. It left a little puddle behind it. That's our sub-expression. That's what we're going to run under revised filters. What are we going to do here? Oh, we've done this so many times. Go get all the visible rows of mini, right? Uh, pass it into the sumx iterator, which will add a column uh, with that definition to it. Go get the units for each row. 
and sum up the results. So let's start with the derivation. Go get all the visible rows of mini right there. When it says mini, that's what it does. It produces a temp table. It produces a temp table that looks very much, control C, click down here, control Alt V, pay special values, looks very much like that. Right, there we go. So that is the temp table produced by uh, that uh, physical table derivation right there where we ask for mini. We pass that into the sum x iterator, which adds a column with that definition to it, sums up the results. So I come over here, I'm gonna type in exp. I've already done the hard work. As soon as I hit enter for every single row, we check to see uh, what the row's units are. So we get two, one, one, and three, and we sum it up because this is the sum x iterator. So you could probably already do this in your head. But it's been a long day, so I'm just going to sum, select those cells right there, close the parentheses, and hit enter. And I get the number 7. So 7 is actually what the calculate function is going to return. But before it returns it, it's going to be a good room in and clean up after itself. So right now, the, there's a filter for lunch, right? But before we go on to the do the, any other stuff, the, the next thing, uh, calculate says, well, I don't want this filter context I created to mess anything else up, so I'm going to set it back the way I found it. So before returning that 7, calculate sets the filters back the way it found it. Control C there to pick that up. Pick up that little swatch of color. Control V to paste over that. Okay, so now the filters are back the way that calculate found it. And uh, 7 is uh, what uh, that calculate there returns, which is the sort of the top bit. So down here, I'm just going to type in 7. There we go. And by the way, the filters are empty now, so I'm going to uh, undo this bit. So we should be looking at lunch and dinner. Okay, good. So that's the top bit. We're going to divide it by the bottom bit here in a second. But before we can do the division, we have to figure out what the bottom bit is, right? So, um, well, what's in the bottom bit? Well, a calculate function. Well, whenever we see a calculator, any revisor, we should, with our with our uh, mind's eye, we should go find the sub-expression and freeze it. Now, here in Excel, I can actually freeze it graphically by selecting that bit of code right there, right-clicking, and change the background color to a dark blue color. I should say a light blue color. There we go. Brr, frozen. Okay. So uh, we've frozen the sub-expression argument, right? Now here in Excel, I could do it with color. Uh, when you're running your own code, you have to do it with your eyes, right? Either way, there's our sub-expression. Calculate is now going to revise the filters. Notice the filters are blank right now, right? And uh, then it will unfreeze this and run it. Okay, so uh, what do we do uh, down here? Well, it's the same as up here. The only difference is we're keeping the dinner rows as opposed to the lunch rows. Okay, that's pretty easy. So this derivation right here says uh, go get all the values of shift, ignoring the filters. That's what the all function does. So just like up here, we get, if we look up here, there we go, lunch and dinner. So what do we get? We get shift, lunch, and dinner. And uh, just like above, we pass it into the filter iterator. The difference this time is the definition of our expression column has changed. Up here it was shift equals lunch, down here it's shift equals dinner. So when I type in exp to get my expression column, as you could probably guess, uh, these values are flipped because rather than looking for lunch, we're now looking for dinner. So we get a false because lunch does not equal dinner, and we get a true because dinner does equal dinner. So what does the filter editor do? Just like up here, it keeps the true rows, but down here, the true rows is the dinner row. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to type in shift, dinner. There we go. That temp table is the result of line 12, right? So that's what the filter iterator returns, and it passes it to the calculate function. The calculate says, I know exactly what to do with temp tables. I know exactly what to do with temp tables. I'm going to add them as filters, as override filters. So calculate's going to take this temp table. I'm going to hover over that, left click and drag, and add it to the filter context to create a revised filter context. Now it's more accurate to say that it moves it, but I like to think of, I like to see it in both places, so I'm going to make a copy by holding down the control button. And what I do, notice I get a little plus symbol on my cursor. I let go. There we go. So now calculate has added that filter of shift equals dinner. If there were multiple override um, arguments, if there was a comma and like more temp table overrides, we'd have to add them. But there's just that one override argument right there on line 12. So calculate is done revising the filters. This is what the new filters look like. Speaking of which, let's filter this down right now to dinner. So we could see uh, what the DAX engine sees, sort of. Okay, there we go. So this is what the model looks like right now. That mini table looks kind of like that with that filter in place. So now calculate. The filters are all done. It can unfreeze this sub-expression and run it. So let's select the sub-expression, right-click, come over here, and we're going to change the background color to that sort of dark gray color. We threw in the microwave for 30 seconds, left a little puddle behind it, but it's unfrozen. We can now uh, run it. So what do we do here? Well, the same as up here. Uh, the only difference is now we have a filter for dinner, where before we had a filter for lunch. Okay, so 
What are we gonna do? We're gonna go to all the visible rows of many, add that column to it, sum up the results. Easy, easy. Control C to copy. Come on down here. Control Alt V to pay special. You can either click V or click on values, however we wanna do it. Select values and hit OK. There we go, that is the temp table produced by that physical table derivation right there where it says mini. That's what, so this is what that produces. We pass it into the sum x iterator, which adds an expression column with that definition and that adds it up. For every single row, get the units. Well, if I come over here and I type in exp, we'll see that I've already done that. So for each row, we get the units, so we get two, one, and two. And if we sum it up, we're summing it because it's the sum x iterator. Type in sum. And I'll select those cells right there. I probably could have done that in my head, but that's fine. And I get 5. So the bottom bit is going to be 5, right? So ca this calculator is going to return the number 5. Before it does, though, it's going to clean up after itself, right? Because there might be more code happening down here. Therefore, it's actually pretty important that a uh, calculator, or any revisor for that matter, once it's done evaluating the sub-expression, before it returns the value, it sets the filters back the way it found it. So uh, what, what were the filters like before uh, this calculate changed them? Well, it was this minus that shift equals dinner filter. So I'm going to come over here, control C, select that right there, control V, and we will set this back. There we go. Okay, so now, 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 calculate has set the filters back the way it found it. It can now return that number of five. So this bottom bit right there is equal to five. So down here where it says bottom bit, I'm going to type in five and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so good. So now the uh, top bit, is 7, the bottom bit is 5, we want the top bit divided by the bottom bit. Well, 7 divided by 5, so I'm going to come over here, I'm going to do 7 divided by 5, and I hit enter, and I get 1.4, and this 1.4, that is the actual result of this snippet of code, right? So hopefully you could, you could kind of see, I mean, it's not like a perfect example, but I think it's a pretty good example of you know, stuff might actually happen after a calculate runs or any revisor runs, which is why it resets the filters. That way, the next stuff that runs is not not run under some, you know, messed up, ugly filter context. Okay, well, I sure do hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.